Welcome to Westeros, the land of Game of Thrones. In reality, it's Northern Ireland. Large parts of the internationally acclaimed television series were shot here over the past 10 years. Well, one of the main reasons that, uh, that HBO and Game of Thrones came to Northern Ireland was the wealth of our scenery. Every one of our six counties has a, a slightly different look to it. It has a different geology, it has a different landscape. And I think in the, the 10 years or so that Game of Thrones have been here, they've visited almost every one of the, the locations that we have in Northern Ireland. For two seasons, Richard Hodgen played one of the wildings in Game of Thrones. Now, he gives tours of the locations. Here, fans can visit the original scenes of the action. For example, the 12th century Inch Abbey south of Belfast. And if they wish, they can even become Knights of Westeros for a brief moment. In every step that we took, we took pictures of it. It's amazing, it's amazing. It's, 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 I felt like I'm actually in Winterfell. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, it's good, it's actually good fun. I feel so happy, it's like being in Westeros. Yeah. The landscape's gorgeous on its own. It's quite impressive, actually, especially coming from Australia. You don't have anything like this. The hype over Game of Thrones brings people to Northern Ireland from all over the world, some 10,000 tourists every year. Game of Thrones has boosted the tourism, bolstered the tourism for us here over the years. Uh, there's so much added things that people can do to embrace their Game of Thrones fandom. You know, once they're here, all the same locations we've had for tourists over these many years have now been expanded into a whole different realm of interest. And that interest is what people have seen globally on Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is set in a fantasy world. The story follows a number of families battling over control of the continent of Westeros. Our enemy doesn't tire. Doesn't stop. The various peoples also have to defend against enemies from outside. A number of Northern Ireland's many castles and ruins served as settings for the series, such as the tower house of the 15th century Audley's Castle. The stately Gothic castle ward became Winterfell Castle, one of the principal scenes of action in Game of Thrones. The reality has little to do with the fiction. The 18th century estate was much too small for the drama, so it was digitally enlarged. But in the background you can see the, the two magic words of the television industry, which is the green screen. And the green screen is where the magic happens. So using the green screen, the industry are able to project on that background whatever, whatever backdrop that they need. So what they did was they took the tar, they changed it a little bit, and they changed the shot from this, as we have it here, as we go on to the next slide, to this. The area surrounding Winterfell Castle was in fact Tollymore Forest. Unlike the computer-enhanced castles, many spots in the woods are easily recognisable, such as Altavadi Bridge with the Shimna River below. This is where the dire wolf pups were found. They were to play an important part in the later course of events. The little puppies are now full-grown northern Inuit dogs and ready for visits from fans on the tours. The famous Causeway coastal route leads north of Belfast and past several interesting sites, such as the Cushenden Caves. They also hosted cast and crew and now welcome countless fans. But you don't have to be a Game of Thrones nerd to enjoy the tour along the coast. The Iron Islands Coast Tour, it encapsulates so much uh, of the Northern Ireland scenery. Not only can you head up the coast and do all the Game of Thrones nerdy stuff, you can visit all the Thrones locations, but you also see the beautiful coastline of, of North County Antrim. That includes spots like the headland of Fairhead, known in the story as the Dragonstone Cliffs, and the magnificent shoreline of Murloc Bay. 
In the series, Barrentoy Harbour became Pike on the Iron Islands. Farther inland is the Dark Hedges Avenue of beech trees. They appear in only one scene in Game of Thrones, but long enough to make them a favourite tourist destination, unfortunately for the trees. This is a good place to show you why the traffic has to stop on this road. Any vehicle that's coming up here, it's just killing them. It's just totally killing them. Now, we're very lucky. All these scars you can see, this is where this has grown back. If you'd have come here three years ago, all of these banks were full of grass, big round billowous things, gorgeous. This was caused by tourism and buses. This is the, the sort of the bad side of it, you know? After eight seasons, the television fantasy saga is finally drawing to a close. But the memorable scenes of Game of Thrones and the shooting locations will endure. The names Game of Thrones, Belfast and Northern Ireland will always be linked for forevermore, for as long as the name of the show exists. And I'm incredibly proud of that. Uh, as a Northern Irish person who's lived here all my life, I'm incredibly proud that we have a different focus you know, on Northern Ireland. There's been a lot of negative focuses on this country uh, over the past, uh, but it's good to get a very, very positive one. And maybe someday Westeros will return to Northern Ireland. A series on the backstory of Game of Thrones is already being planned. <laughs>